Hey everyone, it's Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Today we're diving into GI pharmacology, antiacids, H2 blockers, PPIs, and more. Now here's the best part. We've packed this video with memory tricks and NCLEX must-knows. So for all my members out there, be sure to grab your GI study guides and let's make it stick. Now for the drugs that reduce acid and prevent ulcers. The number one goal here is to protect the GI from its own acid. So number one, to tone down acid volume, we use antiacids, H2 blockers, and PPIs. And number two, to protect the lining from those holes or peptic ulcers, we use mucosal protectants. The name for this is sucralfate. Now a quick recap on the key terms here. Guys, gastritis is an irritation of the stomach. GERD is gastroesophageal reflux. Just fancy words for heartburn, acid reflux that irritates the esophagus. And ulcers are all about breaking in the lining, talking holes and open sores. So a stomach ulcer, we call it gastric ulcer or a peptic ulcer. And for small intestines, we call it a duodenal ulcer or a duodenal ulcer. Basically, the duodenum inside the small intestine. Make sure to pull out this study guide for this section so you can follow the key points. Now, antiacids are used for fast, immediate relief. So think anti-mixing for antiacids. They're never to be taken with other meds. Probably the biggest test topic I can cover right here. Now, it works by immediately neutralizing stomach acid. But the bad news here is that it doesn't last long. So the acronym we use is SCAM. Like, you kind of got scammed from the short duration of the med. So S for sodium bicarbonate, brand name is Alka-Seltzer. C is for calcium carbonate, brand name Tums and Rolaids, A for aluminum hydroxide, and M for magnesium hydroxide, brand name is Milk of Magnesia. Now that's also a laxative as well as an antiacid here. Now guys, the big side effects can vary on the type of antiacid. So for aluminum or calcium, they can constrict and cause constipation. And magnesium can mellow out the GI tract causing diarrhea. Now on the HESI, there was an exam question about magnesium hydroxide, and it said it can upset the stomach and cause liquid bowel movements. So write that one down, guys. Now the key point here and the memory trick, again, really stressing it here, antiacids are anti-mixing with other meds. Basically blocks the absorption of a lot of medication. So the key point, Never taken with other meds. Always one hour before or one hour after other meds. And guys, it's not for heart failure patients. Nothing OTC are for heart failure patients or over-the-counter drugs. All these things contain sodium, which swells the body. Now, next up is our long-lasting relief, the H2 blockers, histamine 2 receptor antagonists. Fancy words for turns down the volume of acid production. Now these end in tydine. So renatidine, brand name is Zantac, and famotidine, brand name is Pepsid. Now the key point is we take 30 minutes before the meals. So think tydine, you take 30 minutes before you go to dine with tadines. So guys, it's given for GERD and ulcers, both duodenal and gastric. And it works by reducing those gastric secretions by blocking H2 receptors in the stomach. And a big patient education here. We do not overeat, no stress or basically stress reduction, no smoking and no NSAIDs, which leads to GI bleeding. Now for the famous PPIs, the proton pump inhibitors, ending in prazole, like omeprazole, brand name Prilosec, or esomeprazole, brand name Nexium, and the famous pantoprazole, brand name Protonix. Now the key points are the three P's of prazoles. P for prevents holes. So guys, a key word here is stress ulcer prophylaxis. P for porous bones. So we get regular bone density tests and P for possible C. diff or Clostridium difficile infection. So guys, the indication here is for heartburn and GERD, but mainly it's used for ulcer prophylaxis, especially in the hospital due to the hospital-related stress. 
So guys, nearly everyone in med surge usually gets put on a PPI. So when a patient asks, why am I on this med since I usually don't take this at home? Guys, the key word here is it helps prevent the development of an ulcer due to the stress of surgery or hospital stays. Now it works by reducing the gastric acid by inhibiting the proton pump in the parietal cells of the stomach. And once again, for reinforcement here, long-term side effects, P for porous bones. Again, guys, write this down. Regular bone density test. It increases the risk for osteoporosis with long-term use. Increasing the risk for fractures on the spine, wrist, and hip. So guys, always take calcium and vitamin D. And lastly, P for possible C. diff infections, since it suppresses the normal HCL in the stomach, which would normally control the intestinal bacteria. And the last key point is we take 30 minutes before meals, which goes for H2 blockers as well as these PPIs. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by nursing school topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.